They win. Porrele gente, this is Moises Porras coming to you live from Tuxedo Junction. I want to talk to you about all the happenings that we have here. Everybody here is coming down here to party down and have a good time, you see? So why don't you come down here to help me and all the gente so we can all be carnales together. Me, I'm the director and choreographer for the El Pachuco Dance Company. We do dancing from the 1940s up until now and to the 80s, that's it. So I want you to bring all your homeboys down to here and check out this place. Orale, ahí te guacho ese. My name is Moses and who am I? Well, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I work at Our Lady of the Lake University. I'm a supervisor in the facilities management. I'm also a lecturer, I'm a uh, presenter, I'm a, um, I have many hats that I wear, in, including the Tando hat, which is a zoot suit hat. So, um, but I, I love doing what I'm doing and uh, I just want to share a lot of that with everyone out there and, and so forth. What does the Zoot Suit mean to me? To me, it represents culture. To me, it represents my heritage. This is who I am. This is my culture, my identity. It's part of my legacy. My dad was a Pachuco back in the 1940s, and he started sharing a lot of the dress style of wearing the pants and wearing the, the coat and the, speaking the caló, which is a mix of Spanish and English. Words like orale, ay te guacho, um, uh, carnal, words like that. And he started telling me a lot about that. It was really when I was in high school, just after doing West Side Story, that the drama teacher and another couple of friends within the drama department was telling me they're having this play, they're having this thing called Zoot Suit. So the auditions were being held at a Mexican restaurant in Southern California in the Fullerton, Anaheim area. And they were telling me about Phyllis. Phyllis Estrella, she's the owner of El Pachuco Zoot Suits and she was looking for models. And during that time, uh, they explained to me more about the Zoot Suits, that they were gonna be modeling them in nightclubs and car shows and so forth. And she took me on from there when I was 15 years old. Zoot suit is an actual suit that was worn in the 1940s. It was made during the time of World War II. And a lot of the Mexican Americans wanted to wear them because they wanted to be nice looking and go dress to weddings, dances, and so forth. So suits were custom made and tailor made, actually coming from the jazz era during that time when Cab Calloway and some of the other individuals that were out there brought that style and showed it. So the Pachucos picked it up and said, you know what, we want to make it kind of a little bit of our own. So the Zoot Suit consists of a coat and it's called a Takuche. It was custom made. It was fingertip length. It was also tapered in the center to kind of give you that drape shape. That's basically what they would call it. Um, had the wide lapels and with very broad shoulders to kind of give you that other square kind of shape also. 
So it all consisted of having suspenders, which are called the resortes, to hold up your pants. The pants were high-waisted. They had a repleat, which are double pleats, and they called those the tramaos. They were peg-legged with a wide leg on the top, pegged at the bottom, which they came closer to the ankle. So then that way, when the pachuco would dance, he wouldn't trip over his own pants when he was dancing. So that's why they made him so tight. He also wore a chain to swing, which he called a cadena. And he had his shirt, which was called the lisa. And his shoes were called calcos. Many people think it started with Stacy Adams, but actually it started with Tom McCann's, McCann's shoes and so forth. And they used to wear a double show, sole shoe on it and in order for um, the shoes to last longer. So um, it's all about style. It's all about being hip. It's all about looking sharp. That's basically what the Zoot Suit, what the Zoot Suit is. Two, three, four, five. Okay, no, but I want you to come up here. Right here instead. Okay. Do it again. So you can probably start right here and go back. of 2015 is when we began dancing at our first car show. So that was the kickoff when um, we started performing as a family together, which is my daughter, my wife, and another daughter too as well. Huh? Yeah, she stays on that side, but she's more downstage because it's Dancing with your family, it's just, it's something that not everyone gets to do. So it's really refreshing um, to share with my friends, like, hey, me and my family are gonna do this dance together. You wanna come see? And they're like, what does that mean? Like, normally you hear it like for quinceaneras or something, like a wedding or something like that. But um, what we do is a little bit different. But it's, it's been a good experience for us. I mean, we're close as it is. And so getting to dance with them is just a, a fun outlet to have. For those of you who know me, because I work here, if you notice my uniform, I have the repleat, the double pleats. It doesn't go away. It's there. The pachupa style is in my blood. It was in my dad, and it fit me during this time. And from there on, I just loved it. Some of the events that we have gone to as the guest speakers or guest entertainment uh, have been many cultural events around San Antonio to display the Pachuco culture and those cultural events are kind of like the launching pad that people can come and actually see it because it creates this huge dialogue amongst a lot of the people that were out there that we come across and they start remembering, oh yeah, I used to wear the hat, I used to wear the chain, I used to wear the pants and the shoes. And so we do it through dance, we do it through speaking and talk about the Zoot Suit, talk about um, the history talk about my father um, being a pachuco, talk about myself being a pachuco, and some presentation with pictures and, and actual clothing. And um, we even had a fashion show too at Our Lady of the Lake. And people just love it. They embrace it, they see it, they recognize it, and take a lot of pictures too. He's very knowledgeable in what the Zoot Suit stands for, you know, and what it meant back in the day to, to be to wear one, you know, how much people paid, you know, the price of having to wear one with the Zoot Suit rights and all that. He just influences me to keep doing what I do and be in a positive way I'm in because, um, you know, the suit means a lot to me. It's my lifestyle. It's not a costume. It's not something I wear just for a quinceanera or something like that. And, and that's how I related with him is that he, he looks at it the same way as a lifestyle. And from there, we just, you know, we clicked. And, He's definitely a big influence on my life. You know, is there anything that we have to take care of that we missed, like with moving or anything like that? Do you know of anything? Do my coworkers know about my background doing the pachuco and the zutsu um, culture? Some of them do know, some of them don't. Some of them, I shared a, a small amount in the very beginning and as they started to find out, um, I started sharing more within uh, some of the coworkers and, and uh, started bringing in you know, some of the items. And they were wondering because they knew me one way when I would just be wearing my regular uniform for work, but they didn't know me on this side as far as wearing the zoot suit. 
He's a movie star. You know, he likes uh, to keep the culture of the um, 50s. So um, he dresses up as, as the Pachuco <laughs> uh, history. And uh, he's in car shows and uh, he likes dancing. He, uh, he, uh, he likes, uh, he's a real good performer. I think he, um, some, sometimes I think he belongs in the theater. I don't know what he's doing here. <laughs> Are there any other dreams beyond what I'm doing currently working here at Our Lady of Lake of what I normally do as a supervisor? Um, yes, I would love to. I, I put my dreams on hold uh, over the years because housekeeping was a job that um, I did because I was raising a family. Um, I needed to work, I needed to make ends meet, and so um, I became a custodian. I got out of the military and didn't have a job met my beautiful, wonderful wife, trying to find work and so forth because I had a hard time in trying to make ends meet. So with the help of my mom, I ended up becoming a custodian because that's all I could find as far as work. But I put my dreams on hold because my dream was to continue what I was doing when I was younger, from age 15 all the way up to age 19, which is in the performing arts, because I love the performing arts. I enjoy um, performing for people and uh, from anything from dancing because I know when I dance it brings a smile to people, people love it. I love seeing people light up when, when I dance because I'm, I'm just kind of like in my own world and I love doing it. But as you get older, you know, your body's not the same. So um, that's the only thing that kind of really keeps me back. But I put my dreams on hold during that time in order to provide and support my family. And uh, because that was what was more important to me. It never dies, it never goes away. It's always there. It's always there. You just hold it into there, you know, sometimes you have to put it on a shelf. So you have to do your dreams, follow your dreams and go for it and just do it. Because you don't want to look back someday and whenever and say, you know what, man, you know, I put my dream on hold. You know what, go after it now. Orale, gente. This is Moises Porras talking to you as a carnal of me to you. If I was going to be looking at myself if I was 18 years old and looking back, I would definitely look back and say, you're going to have hard times. You're going to have struggles. There's different situations that you're gonna go through that have nothing to do with you personally, but just know that, you know what, that God is there and he's gonna be with you and he's gonna help you to sustain and get you through every situation. And know that you're gonna have this great, wonderful life with a family that's gonna be more important to you with a, with a wife and, a, and a daughters and a son and know that they're going to be there to love you um, always and unconditionally. So if you hold on to that and don't look at anything else that happens or goes on, then you're going you're gonna to live a great life. You're going to come out of those horrible situations and you're going to be a great man of God as your dad was. And you're going to leave a good legacy so as long as you have God in your life, you're going to be fine. That's what I would tell the 18-year-old Moses.